We'll start our demonstration by looking at what the total available power output capacity of the radio is. And as you can see here, we start with a dummy load, which will give us the total available power of the radio. So we will watch right here to see what the total power output will be expressed in watts when we hit the push to talk and we see we've got 9.9 .9 watts of forward power and that's from this 10 watt radio. Now you can see we have placed the stock antenna on our test setup and what we're going to do now is see what the forward power will be of the stock antenna and we've got 9.3 watts of forward power. Now before we look at a forward power test on the tuned antenna, I should point out that not only is this antenna that we're using here tuned, but it has also been ruggedized in order to suit the needs of search and rescue and guides in the field. So therefore it is a lot more rugged. In fact, this is um, a design that was adopted from Smiley that was using it for the US Marine Corps and for Navy SEALs. So the stock antenna here in my hand, you can see quite a difference in the thickness between these two antennas. And what that translates to is the velocity factor. And velocity factor will affect the forward power and things like the standing wave. So what we would anticipate in terms of it affecting the forward power, we would have less forward power from the tuned antenna because the velocity factor has been changed due to the thickening added by the dual wall heat shrink. And as a result, these antennas have to be tuned to adjust for velocity factor. So when we look at the forward power on the tuned antenna, we are getting nine watts, which is what we may be expecting as the tuned antenna should give us a little more forward power due to having the velocity factor, which is increased over what we're seeing in the thickened dual wall heat shrink IPX6 antenna. And you probably would not need something like this antenna if you're using it for recreational purposes. Again, it's designed mainly for search and rescue and professional environments. It's the standing wave on the tuned antenna, which is 2.2. Sticking with this tuned antenna, we are going to now move over to the reflected power. And again, with reflected power, what we want is a lower value rather than a higher value. And we see here we've got a reflected value of 1.25 or one and a quarter watts. Now with the stock antenna, we are going to look at the reflected power. We are getting a reflected power of 3.7 watts back into the radio. And last, with that same antenna, we are going to look at what the standing wave is for it. And we're getting a value of 3.5. The lower the value, the better. So ideally, we would want something under 3 for any of the rubber duck antennas that we're using. We'll start our vector network analysis by looking at the response curve for how this antenna, which is the stock antenna, performs in both the VHF commercial band, which is this green band here, and as well we will look at where the third harmonic is with respect to UHF. And the green band over here represents the area where common FRS frequencies are found and over here we have the ham bands that are up in that level and you can see here in between 
that we don't have anything values that are falling before the standing wave line which is denoted here of 3. We want values to fall below the 3 for our intended transmission ranges. So we have a value here, for example, that is around 390 to 400 megahertz. We have another very good value over here where it falls well below 1.5 at around 440 megahertz and we can see here that in the FRS frequencies also there is an acceptable standing wave ratio so the stock antenna is well intended for the ham bands and with respect to the ham bands let's go back over to VHF and look at where marker number one falls just a little bit above our 3.0 standing wave line which is marker number one is 143.3 now we're going to go for a walk and do some field testing to the same place that i did in the previous video where we tested the quan Sheng stock antenna so if you'd like a better more detailed overview of where i'm going on this walk which we're going to see shortly here I would refer you to go back to the previous video in the antenna playlist where we did the Quan Sheng and I will give you a better overview of what we did when we went up tunnel but I'm basically doing the same test that I did in the previous one by hiking up tunnel and then doing a couple of tests with one station left down here at home with Sharon being my contact point and me being up here on tunnel so we're going to go straight to that now probably recognize this endangered white bark pine here beside the trail I do apologize when I did this hike up tunnel to do this field test the winds were gusting up to around 70 80 kilometers per hour which created a lot of wind noise in the audio therefore I've had to do some heavy editing and I've left in the pertinent parts which will demonstrate the signal strength we were getting. Testing the stock antenna right now. How do you copy? Two by two. I copy you four by four. Okay, Roger that. I'm going to swap antennas step by one. It's tuned uh, from 145 to 155. And we're transmitting at almost 148. Can you give me a, st a signal strength report? Yeah, it will be better. Okay, so you'd say I'm 5x5 five five now, and changing antennas made the difference? Roger that. And your location? That one is 3x3. Three three. My location is inside the house. Okay, can you uh, change antennas over to the tuned antenna now? I did not copy that at all. Okay, I'm changing antennas to um, smiling. Stand by one. I'm outside, how do you copy? I copy you five by five, and how about you? Same, five by five. It's probably worth it to uh, do a little demonstration as to what the light looks like on this radio. We'll call it a bonus section. So normally I hike with my hip belt light on which you can see here and because the trail has got icy patches on it still it's handy for me to identify where the ice is and that's 
this time of year, although I do have uh, studded studs on the bottom of my shoes. So let's just see what it looks like if I turn the light on on the radio. And I will put the radio between my legs and I will now shut off my hip belt. As you can see, you can't really expect too much if you get stuck with only the light on your radio. You might find something in your pack, but I wouldn't use it to navigate an icy trail at night. I would assume the light on your cell phone would be a better option. The radio on my left here is a DP738 dual band DMR radio from TED Radio. And I did note that the antenna that they send is the same antenna. So I will not really need to do a video on a stock antenna test for the TED DMR radio and we will just stick with the ones we've done here for the H8. Now regarding this stock antenna for the H8, I know that typically recreational users and hobbyists will order an aftermarket antenna such as a diamond or maybe even something like this commercial grade antenna. After they purchase a hobby grade radio such as a Baofeng in the belief that it will improve the performance of the radio, the aftermarket antenna I mean. While I do not deal with recreational users and therefore do not have an antenna such as a diamond to test, I did have one once and it fell apart on me after about a month of use about 15 years ago. Um, what I've found here with our bench tests and field tests indicate that hams and recreationalists would not need to purchase an aftermarket antenna for operating the TID radio over frequencies in the ham or FRS bands. And you can see that best on our charts that I showed earlier. Indeed, I myself have been in the habit of telling clients that most stock antennas are about as good as a coat hanger. So I guess I'll have to revise that refrain going forward. However, while the TID stock antenna shown here may not be resonant on the 1.25 meter band, it does display acceptable standing wave characteristics on both the 70 centimeter UHF and 2 meter VHF bands. So what I mean by the 1.25 meter band is the 220 megahertz area that is popular with a niche group of ham users and has been allocated to the ham band. However, there is no second harmonic that is provided by this radio that will allow you to get by. And indeed, if you go by the, uh, you can't see it here, but there is a frequency range stated in the edges of the stock antenna, indicating it's dual band for VHF and UHF. However, the frequencies printed on it aren't really reflected as being accurate if you go by what our VNA charts have indicated for it.